Hello. These are some spoons that I did uh, back in 2018. It was my first year of spoon tune. I was a budding young artist with hopes and dreams, um, which I still have. <laughs> but um, this was really my intro to studying. I think it's why I like spoon tunes so much. It's got some kind of sentimental value to me. Um, but it was this idea that I could just pay close attention to the 2D shapes that I was seeing. And if I copied them just right, I get something that looked real or, or looked, you know, uh, like the thing I was trying to paint. I've since grown as an artist. Um, and so it only makes sense that the way I practice should grow as well and it should change. So this year for Spoon June, after four prior years of Spoon June, I decided that instead of just studying spoons, you know, that I found, whether that was through the Discord server or on Pinterest or in an antique shop, um, I would invent them from my head. Now that could be a kind of inky tentacle spoon, a spoon that dispenses water when you flick the cap up, uh, a spoon with a hole in that's completely useless. Uh, I decided that whatever it was, I was going to paint it entirely from my imagination and I was going to paint it um, in a way that kind of seemed fun to me. I didn't want to do something boring. I, I could have very easily painted very boring normal spoons from my uh, imagination, but I, I wanted to push myself for it. So, um, I'm still trying to bear in mind the things that I've learned previously. I'm still trying to figure out and understand how metal works, but there's this added challenge of also inventing the form at the same time. Something that really, really helped me with this was actually perspective. So spoons have pretty strict perspective. They are a, an elliptical um, kind of form that has another curve that goes into a smaller ellipse at the base. Um, and then even the handle, when you play close attention to it, it's not just a straight piece of metal. It usually curves over from the, the spoony bit of the spoon uh, and then goes back down to meet the ground plane. So I was kind of figuring out that I could draw specific perspective grids to get all that right. Um, and it just took the heavy lifting away from the rendering. I could just focus on rendering the metal because I had a nice, concise drawing beforehand. Um, I'm figuring more and more as I grow as an artist that taking it slow and actually being careful with things is probably a smart move. I'm surprised I didn't figure that out earlier. Now, if I told you um, to design a spoon, maybe if it was an assignment brief, uh, if any of my university students are, are listening or watching, um, you might groan and say, well, that's boring. Why can't I paint a spaceship or a cowboy um, or a crazy fantasy goblin or something? And the whole point is that in this case, and in most cases, um, the subject matter shouldn't really be cool. It's you that has the job of making it cool. And spoons are a pretty good way of doing that, I'm finding. A lot of these spoons, I'm looking at them after I've done them and I'm thinking that they're more interesting to look at than um, character designs that I've done in the past, right? I'm injecting um, a lot of personality and thought into them, uh, thinking about the kind of metal that they might be made of and, and how that's going to influence how we perceive the design. How do you hold the spoon? You know, do you have to hold it very delicately because it's got a thin handle or can you hold it um, with more of a kind of ham fist? So all of these things affect how we look at it. Um, how might you actually eat out of it? For a lot of them, you, you wouldn't. Maybe it, the spoon is used just to hold some grapes or something. I have no clue. Um, but these are all fun questions that we can ask ourselves, right? Um, and that's true of any kind of design. So next time you're sat down thinking, right, I need to do something really cool. I've got to paint a temple with lots of um, crazy undead monks in it uh, and an aliens coming down to eat everyone. Um, maybe kind of lower your expectations a little bit. Paint something a bit more mundane. There's no reason why you can't paint something as simple as a man sitting under a tree. Um, and make that cool and do it really well. So you're not getting too distracted by the concept. You're 
um, actually worrying yourself a little bit more about the execution. Um, I find that that's really helped me in the past. I did a painting at one point of like some pigs uh, in a pigsty. It was really innocuous and boring. Um, but it was at that point that I kind of figured out that actually pigs in a pigsty, if you paint them really well, um, it, that can make a really cool painting, right? Maybe you're paying attention to how the light is kind of cascading through the, the sort of thin hair on the top of a pig. And then some of that's coming through onto the skin, but you're getting all these interesting cast shadows that are being made. Is there going to be any subsurface scattering on the pig? Um, you can really nerd out about it. And all of the people I know who are um, the best concept artists or, you know, great concept artists that I, I, I'd like to work with, um, they're the kinds of people who do allow themselves to nerd out about things, right? Um, it, it's not just a hat. It's, oh, this hat's so cool. How would you wear it? How would it strap on? What's it made of? How do they gather the materials to make the hat? Um, that kind of thing. So I think spoons are a pretty good time to practice. You know, maybe so far this month you've only painted spoons from reference. You might be finding, like most people, that you're either running out of reference or a lot of the references is, is very similar from similar camera angles, similar kinds of spoons, similar um, types of metal. Um, make some from your imagination. And this doesn't have to be something that's mutually exclusive either. A lot of the time I see people who only study or they only draw things from their imagination. Why can't you do both? I think you can, and I think doing both is going to help you in the long run. Switching between the two, um, learning things from observation, and then applying them in your own time. Go forth, paint spoons, be merry, um, and I will see you in the next video. The link to the Discord is going to be in the description, as always, um, and so is the link to my Patreon, where I'm happy to paint over people's work, give them critique. Um, you'll get access to brushes and there's a separate kind of private discord there where I'd like to hang out and paint with you guys. So have a good day. <laughs>